Hey, Shad here with Speed Addicts, the fastest growing gear site on the web. And today we're gonna uncrate the Arai Corsair X. Okay, Speed Addicts fam, before we jump in and tell you all about one of the world's finest motorcycle helmets, the Corsair X, go ahead and subscribe for us. That helps us keep bringing you the best gear reviews in the universe, of course. If you decide you'd like to purchase an Arai helmet from us here at Speed Addicts, We'd love that as well. There's a link in the description below to shop for any Arai helmet you might be after, as well as any other parts or gear you might need for your next two-wheel adventure. So Arai, legendary, 70 years of motorcycle helmet manufacturing experience is going into the pinnacle of their lineup, the Corsair X here. So technically, this helmet was built for the track. Can you use it on the street? Of course you can. Can you use it on something that's not a sport bike? Absolutely. We have customers wearing this on all sorts of different machines, but it is a high performance racing lid uh, in its DNA here. That's what they're going for. Arai has a number of different helmets in their lineup, but this is their top tier racing lid. It's coming in at 879 for a solid color. This is their matte black version. They call their matte helmets frost so this is a frost black they also have plenty of graphics including race replicas top of the range is going to run you 999 dollars now that's not cheap but what we've noticed when we compare our pricing currently to the other premium brands on the market is that the gap is narrowed significantly or they're pretty much at the same price point so before if you didn't give Arai a look because of the price tag, well, guess what? Those other premium brands are kind of right in that same neighborhood pushing towards that $1,000 price point for what is really one of the gold standards in the industry. Built in Japan, they are all about safety and quality first. That's what Arai has built their brand on. The shell of the Corsair X is a composite shell. This is their proprietary Aramid fiber blend. They call it the PBS NC2. Uh, they call the fibers they're using super fibers. They use uh, a blend of those as well as a, a mesh net, their proprietary resin blend to create a very strong and uh, as light as possible on the shell. The weight itself, three and a half pounds. That's not super light. It's not super heavy. It's somewhere in the middle. Because you can custom fit the Arai and they use five shell size, you can get the fit really close on your head. The weights can be evenly distributed. So even though it's a little heavier than some of its peers, in this sport or track class, uh, you won't feel it out there. When it comes to safety, that's always a rise priority. This helmet is Snell 2020 and DOT. So when I ask the folks over at Arai, hey, what about EC 2205? You know, what about FIM? They just go, oh yeah, our helmets would pass those. We don't build to test, we build to our experience is what Arai says. So while some of the other brands are scrambling to build to new tests, Arai ha has, you know, basically no extra work to do here because they've always been building to the absolute highest levels of safety that they've learned over their last 70 years of manufacturing helmets. They actually won in 2019, they won the FIM uh, gold medal. So very well recognized for safety. When it comes to the fit, they are gonna give you those five shell sizes, five EPS sizes. So you're gonna get the closest fit to your particular head you can. Cheaper helmets use less shell size. A lot of times that means you're wearing a helmet that's too big, not with a rye. When it comes to fitment, you're gonna see sizes extra small through 2X available in this Corsair X. Fitment is rather true. Go by that Arai sizing chart at speedaddicts.com. If you're between sizes, round down. If anything, Arai tends to run just a touch big. You, there are finer adjustments you can make with the cheek pads and liners. We're gonna go over that a little bit more uh, in more detail later in this video. And remember, if you buy your next helmet at Speed Addicts, you have any issues with fit, or you just decide it's not for you, you can qualify for no cost returns. That's right, a free return label in a couple of clicks. All you have to do is live in the lower 48 states. Make sure the helmet is brand new in the original packaging, not test ridden. Uh, we recommend test fitting in your living room. And with Arise specifically, we recommend removing the cheek pads if you're not sure about the fit. Really focus on how the crown is fitting you uh, and not don't worry so much about the cheek pads because they have a huge variety of different thicknesses and they're all interchangeable. Again, more on that later. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'm all done with my shameless plugs. Let's dive in and look at this Corsair X in more detail. Ventilation first. So there's a lot of venting going on here. It's important on a track to keep you cool, reduce fatigue, because when you're fatigued, that's when mistakes happen. We don't want that. Corsair X has you covered. There's lots of ventilation. You have your primary crown vents. These are not a mystery here. These are three position vents, all the way open, halfway open, all the way closed. You can totally shut it down if you're in colder weather, which is great. Down here, another standard vent. This is like most motorcycle helmets you've ever seen. It does have three positions, so halfway open, all the way open, and all the way closed. That's pretty much the standard package you're gonna see on a lot of racing helmets, but a Rai, they go the extra mile. So <clears throat> you'll notice there are no holes or vents right here in the forehead area. That is intentional. They do not want to compromise the shell next to the opening that will lead to cracking. Instead, they've come up with a very clever venting system through their vas shield on either side right above your brow so that they can get venting onto your temples right here. So that's going to hit these blowers. That's going to enter the helmet right there on your forehead. They have additional, <clears throat> what I'm going to call, cockpit vents that are very hard to see. They're tucked behind this cheek pad and the EPS on both sides. So even when the face shield is closed, you're gonna get some passive um, extraction of that hot air up around your face. It's going to be passed through the shell and out these passive exhaust vents in the back, as well as this vent down here in the neck row. Really cool, unique, not something I've ever seen on any other helmet. So very advanced, well thought out ventilation on the Corsair X. As we move to the back, Switchable extractors on the back. That is unusual. That's not something you typically see. Usually these are always open. So because of that, you can really shut down the ventilation. If you're riding cold weather, uh, you can, can really shut this helmet down quite a bit. Leave them uh, halfway open, all the way open, or all the way closed. And then of course those vents I already showed you down here. This is a downforce wing. It can be lifted up to uh, increase downforce. Or if you push it forward, you can retract again, push it forward and down it will be in the, uh, the all the way down position. So while we're talking about the ventilation system, I will call out all these vents do shear off in an accident or if you bump the helmet into something. You've been warned, a rise warranty office sends out a lot of vents um, because of that. But that is again, an intentional safety feature for a ride. They have a very uh, specific shape they're going for when they build their shells. It's an egg shape, it's very strong, and it is meant to glance off objects. They don't have any big angles or dramatic shapes because it compromises safety. Same with all their ventilation and trim pieces. These are meant to shear off. So you've been warned, be careful when you're transporting this helmet on or off the bike because these can come loose. And on to the face shield. We have a very awry face shield mechanism here with the pods. The pods used to be dreaded, they'd get lost, they used to have to stay on when you put the face shield on, you're flying blind. They solved a lot of these problems on the Corsair X and some of their newer models. I'm gonna geek out here for a minute, bear with me. If you wanna remove your face shield, you're going to, first of all, you have this lock down here. You're gonna up and up, more on that lock in a minute. Let's look at this pod. So now they have a release, there's no tool required. You need to press this until the pod pops. You're gonna notice a safety cable that's gonna prevent accidental deployment problems. If this comes off on the road because you didn't put it on correctly, it's not gonna be lost on the highway. We like that a lot. <clears throat> Let's pause and talk about why they do a pod instead of some of the newer gear systems that you see on other helmets. The reason they're using this pod is that this, this pivot mechanism is very shallow. You'll notice the recess for this pivot kit is hardly anything on the helmet. And because they're barely making a recess, they have to cover the gear with a pod. Now, other helmets, they intrude into the shell more and they can tuck away that gear set, but that creates a safety compromise. You're actually pushing into the shell and you're pushing into that EPS right there. Awry, again, all about safety. That's why we're dealing with these pods. It's because it results in a safer, safer design here. Okay, so once you pull this trigger, it's going to lift this little brass tab into a position to where the shield can be removed. Now I'm gonna close the face shield again. It's gonna to move towards this red dot. Once you're at the red dot, it's going to come off. Uh, red is hot, hot is off. So here we go. We're gonna put it back on the red to get it back in its groove. Once it's back on the red and it's on these tabs, we're gonna lift it up and put it down and you're back in, in action here. So very straightforward. Now that we're back in the channel here, all I have to do is drop 
this top tab on first. All right, and push down and we're back and we're hooked in. Pretty straightforward. There you have it. Okay, now more on the face shield. The face shield is pin lock ready. Um, they also have racing prep visors if you're gonna run tear offs, but out of the box, you're gonna get a clear pin lock ready shield. For $1,000, they're even gonna throw in a free pin lock insert. If you're not familiar with pin lock inserts, well, if you're riding when it's cool or uh, foggy out, your face shield tends to fog. The pin lock insert installs on the inside of the VAS face shield. And it's gonna create a dual pane system that reduces or mitigates fog. The face shield itself is locked in place with this mechanism right here. So it has two positions once you're down. So you have all the way open. You don't have any sort of detent system in the middle. So this is kind of a smooth slide after closing. You're gonna hit the first latch. This is what they call the demist position. So this is gonna allow some airflow through the seal. As you push down harder, you're gonna go into a full locked position. Okay, that's gonna pull the shield back and make a really complete seal around the whole gasket. Now the face shield's locked. You're not gonna be able to accidentally deploy the face shield to unlock the face shield. It is up and up. So you're gonna hit the button first and then pull the shield, whoops, sorry. So fully locked, press the button, pull the shield up. Okay, up and up. That's how this face shield locks. Eye port is 210 degrees. Max vision shield provides great visibility, peripherals, and up in the tuck position. When it comes to comp systems, you shouldn't have any problems here. You could run either a clamp or a sticky mount on the Corsair X. Now you will run into the Hyper Ridge, but we have plenty of customers that run either mount without any sort of trouble. That Hyper Ridge or that line you're seeing around the bottom edge of the helmet, that is meant to mitigate cracking. That bottom edge the, around the opening of the helmet is susceptible to cracking. If it's impacted, this works as a shock absorber to uh, dampen any sort of impact there. Now let's flip this helmet over and do the full tear down for your viewing pleasure. The first thing you're gonna notice on the Corsair X, they have a very stout chin curtain here. This thing is beefy. It's gonna keep a lot of the noise and wind out. First, let's uh, undo the uh, chin straps. You got a double D-ring closure. No surprises there. Arai is uh, vehemently opposed to any sort of quick release buckles. They stand by the, the tried and true D-ring system. We're gonna go ahead and remove this chin curtain. Usually you can either slide it or remove the clips depending on uh, how you wanna attack that. That is what the chin curtain looks like. You don't have to run it, but it will make the helmet significantly quieter. That is their air spoiler, a little bit of added uh, aerodynamic efficiency here at speed if you wanna pull that down. Otherwise you can tuck it up and out of the way. You'll notice these little tags here. These are the emergency quick release tags. If someone needs to get you out of the helmet more safely, they can pull those and remove the cheek pads before the whole helmet comes off your head. With a right cheek pads, you're gonna reach in, grab the whole front of the cheek pad to remove it and pull it towards the rear of the helmet. That will disengage this clip up here in the front and then you can pull the rest of it out. The, the uh, neck roll will have a little tab that's inserted to the cheek pad that you can remove and then we're gonna take it off of the chin strap. Okay, there it is. So this cheek pad, very nice and contoured, okay, to fit your face. These come in all sorts of different thicknesses. So if the fit in the face is not perfect out of the box, we can help you get a different set of cheek pads, no problem here at speedx.com. You do have some adjustment though. You are able to remove a layer or two depending on the size of the cheek pad. I believe this is a size medium. So we have a, that gray layer. You can go ahead and peel that off if the helmet's fitting too closely in the face. I'd encourage you to allow some break in before you start removing the layers of the foam. After breaking, if it's still too tight, go in there and you can remove that. Now you also have a place to put your speaker pocket. So that foam just pulls out of the way. You can put your speaker in there. <clears throat> Replace this antimicrobial fabric here over that and your speaker will be tucked away neatly in here. You won't even be able to see it and uh, you'll be dialed in. Okay, let's remove the bottom cheek pad here. Now, unlike the crown liners, the cheek pads are all interchangeable between sizes. So it's pretty easy math to get a different set of cheek pads. The liners are shell specific. So if you're gonna order a different liner, be aware of that and you might need to call us up for some assistance. So the size medium, it's coming in with that 25 millimeter cheek pad stock that can be trimmed down a little bit if you need room. The neck roll, we can spin that and pull that out of the way. Now the neck roll does have this really cool, whoops, <clears throat> passive vent here to get some more airflow working through the helmet. And that's what she looks like. This is sold separately if you need to replace it. I know the neck roll is always a high traffic area. Once you set your helmet down on anything rough, it tends to get torn up. So you can refurbish the helmet 
in that way. The comfort liner. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and remove that here. Now, when I get this comfort liner out of the way, you're going to be able to see the, the Arai EPS. This is what I'm told is the most closely guarded secret at the Arai factory because it is a one piece EPS system. A lot of other manufacturers will use multiple pieces because it's easier to install that way to get it through the opening. But what that leads to is seams between the pieces of EPS that are just not going to perform as well as the single piece EPS. Now this EPS is one piece, but it's multi-density. For example, in the forehead around the opening, because the opening is there, they reinforce that EPS to make it a little bit harder and stronger around the opening and so forth. So the EPS is finely tuned, as is the shell. Now there's five shells, five EPSs. They are accounting for not just the physical dimensions of bigger and smaller heads, but they're actually tuning the, the uh, flexibility of the shell itself, the integrity of the shell for a heavier or a lighter head. Really cool. Same with the EPS. They're taking the actual weight and thus the energy generated an impact into consideration when they're deciding how much flex to give those different shell sizes. Really neat. So that is what the internals look like. You notice there are some vent holes. There's no channeling though. Arise making no compromises when it comes to that EPS um, for ventilation or otherwise. They want that one piece uh, solid EPS there. <clears throat> now the comfort liner. Adjustable. There's padding that can be removed on both of your sides here to get you more room. If you have a rounder head fit, you could account for that. This, uh, this suspension system also has three settings. So you can adjust how much tension you have up here on the headliner, and you can also remove um, a strip up here on either side. So very customizable, very cool headliner that is wicking, antimicrobial, all that jazz here. Let's turn it inside out. So you can see the mesh up there on the top. <clears throat> that is the comfort liner. And you do typically have one alternative option when it comes to the crown liner, uh, either thicker or thinner. It kind of depends on which stock size you're working with to um, adjust the fitment. All right, folks, that does it for the Arai Corsair X. Thanks for hanging in there with us. I know there's a lot to talk about with this helmet. We truly think it's one of the finest helmets on the market today. So there's a lot to say, but if there's something I missed, let us know over at speedx.com. Rider support is standing by. You can talk to a human over there through the phone, live chat, or emails. Now, Corsair X has been out for a while, so I know there's a bunch of you that have owned these. Let us know how you like them in the comment section below. Don't take my word for it. Arise is going to back this up with a five-year warranty, and that is a wrap, folks. We'll see you next time to find out what's in the crate.